Mueller report by mid-April, if not sooner. Barr says the redaction process is now underway with Mueller's help. He says once they have finished combing through the nearly 400 pages, the report will be released. Barr is also open to testifying, suggesting that May 1st uh, for the Senate Judiciary Committee and May 2nd for the House Judiciary Committee. Uh, Congressman Jamie Raskin is a Democrat on the House Judiciary Committee and is joining me right now. Good to see you, Congressman. Good so to be with you. your reaction to this new timeline uh, and Barr's offer to both testify and to release a redacted report. Well, we're standing by our timeline, which was Chairman Nadler's uh, request to have all the materials turned over, us, t turned over to us by April the 2nd. That was still a more permissive and open deadline than any independent counsel or special counsel had ever uh, been given. Uh, if you think back to the Kenneth Starr report, the report was delivered basically the next day and then big boxes of mm -hmm. supporting materials came over in vans uh, to the U.S. Congress. It was the same thing in Watergate. The attorney general worked with Congress to go to court to say the grand jury materials should be released to Congress. And so what are Congress your suspicions here? What are your sus suspicions here as to why it was done very differently? Well, we have no idea, of course, what's in the... Um, Mueller report because it hasn't been turned over to us. We've been able to torture out of the Department of Justice the uh, revelation that there are more than 400 pages in there of factual findings and about presumably not just um, whether or not there was conspiracy and whether or not there was obstruction, but also the counterintelligence conclusions and all other kinds of material. In fact, yesterday, the attorney general was backpedaling rapidly, saying he did not summarize the report. He just zeroed in on those things he wanted to talk mm -hmm. about. So the, the questions grow more voluminous by the day here. Mm -hmm. um, the, the basic problem, of course, is that uh, as far as we can tell, Special Counsel mm -hmm. Mueller said there was substantial evidence for the president having obstructed justice, but then the attorney general just closed the door on it and said there was no obstruction of justice, and presumably he was acting on the authority of his own 19-page memorandum, mm -hmm. single-spaced, which operated kind of like a job application in mm -hmm. which he said the president of the United States could never be guilty of obstructing mm -hmm. justice because he's the president. So you said the, the questions are, you know, voluminous, you know, by the day. And, of course, if the redacted report is released by mid-April and if, indeed, you know, Barr is to testify on Capitol Hill, your questions, you know, by May may be very different from what your questions are now. But, but you know, what does your instinct tell you now about the questions you would want to ask uh, Barr if well, you have the opportunity to ask him? Well, the first question is... Um, but why did he throw out all of the evidence that Mueller found about presidential obstruction of justice, some of which was public, he said, but some of which still has not been made public? But why was all of it thrown out, and why did the attorney general decide as a matter of law there was no obstruction of justice? Was he just echoing his own conclusions in that 19-page memo where he advanced a very extreme and marginal view within the law, which is that the president as a matter of law, cannot obstruct justice. The theory is because the president sits on top of the law enforcement function in the Department of Justice, he can interfere in any case he wants. He can dismiss witnesses. He can end cases. He can uh, throw out prosecutions just because he's the president. Nobody else really believes that, but our attorney general does, and he mm -hmm. is the one who made the call about whether or not there was obstruction of justice. So we need to read that report. Mm -hmm. So House Judiciary Chairman uh, Jerry Nadler says, you know, this is he's very disturbed by this lack of transparency. Your Senate colleague, Maisie Hirono, said this last night. The House committee is entitled to that information because it is the committee and the, the, any uh, investigation into impeachment starts with the House. So uh -huh. from your perspective, it would be OK to share some of this very sensitive information with the House Judiciary Committee on a very confidential basis but could not be made public. Is that right? The, the House Judiciary Committee is entitled to a non-redacted version. version. They are entitled. I'm not saying that the Senate committee should get that, although it would be good. You know, I'd, I'd like to see. Why should the House uh, committee be entitled but not the Senate committee? Because of the, uh, anything relating to impeachment starts with the House. So they need the full report. Uh, so, Congressman, um, if indeed, you know, that is the case, as she states it, particularly because, you know, oversight on impeachment proceedings, if the House Judiciary Committee does not receive 
unredacted version and everyone then only gets redacted. What are your thoughts on that? Well, Senator Verona, she's exactly right. Uh, that there's a basic confusion of institutional roles here. It's up to the Congress to decide what material should be redacted in the interests of national security. It's up to the Congress to decide what materials are not appropriate for the public to see. Not for the Attorney General to be doing that. And if you look at the entire past practice of the prior independent counsels and special counsels, they just turned everything over to Congress because it's our constitutional oversight function which is in play here. And so how Attorney do you see that General being challenged strictly in court? Or well, we may have to go way. to court. We'll see if the attorney general continues to play games with this, with his vague mid-April deadline. Uh, we may have to go to court. But because we gave him a hard deadline of April the 2nd, which was extremely liberal and permissive. If you look at the history of independent counsel, special counsel reports mm -hmm. being turned over, he had more time than anybody. Look, he had enough time overnight to determine as a matter of law that the president was not guilty of obstruction of justice. How long is it going to take him just to turn over the report and send us all of the supporting materials, which mm -hmm. also we have a legal right to receive? All right. We'll leave it there for now. Congressman Jamie Raskin.